In this video, we're going to take you through all the important steps to help get your BuildExact account and tax profile set up correctly. So specifically, we're going to talk a bit about the business details area, how to set up and manage your users, how to manage your subscription, and lastly, we'll touch on how to configure your tax profile. Now, quick note, while you can change this information at any time in the future, we do recommend spending a few minutes to get it all filled out and set up right away. To begin, we're going to navigate to the My Business area and we're gonna start under a business account in the business details area. From here, we're gonna click on the business details section where you can essentially start to fill in information such as your business name, uh, you can change information like any business numbers, contact emails, billing emails, websites and licenses and whatnot. Quick note though, that if you do need the registered email change, um, that will need to be done through our support team, which you can reach out to at any time by clicking the send us a message here or here, and then just sending across a registered email change request. Now to the right, we can also edit the logo here, which BuildExact accepts all common picture formats. And further down, you can also enter in and edit your business contact details. Now, BuildExact uses all the information, the business details, logo, and contact details section all across the system. And that'll include everything from different portals you use within BuildExact up to and including documentation that BuildExact produces. So everything from the quote letter to request for quote portal to outgoing invoices and much more. So we do again, and it's very important to note, to recommend to fill it all out correctly just to present a professional documentation. Next, we have the gallery. And quick note that this will only be visible for users on trial, pro, or team subscription, as this and the brand colors below are used to help brand and fill out your client project, AKA the client portal, which we'll talk about in a future video. Lastly is the other settings. And the only thing you really just need to double check here is just to make sure your time zone is set correctly. Otherwise, everything else should be set up right when your account is first created. Next, we're gonna to navigate to the users section. And in this section, this is where you can add, delete, and manage your users. Now, right at the top here, this is where we're gonna tell you how many included users you have. Basically, it's just like seats where you can invite additional users to. And for each type of plan with BuildExact, you'll have a number of included users. So for entry, that's one. For pro, that's two. For teams, that's four. But of course, with that being said, you can add in further users but it will come at an additional monthly price and pricing is available on our website. From there to add additional users, you just click the green plus button here and then you can enter in their new details. This will then prompt BuildExact to send that new user an email, inviting them into your system and taking them through that login process. Moving along, you can also click into a user by clicking on the blue text to see their information in case that needs to be changed. And you can also set their user access level rules within BuildExact, which basically controls what areas and features they can and cannot see. Now, we do have an FAQ article, which will take you through uh, all the different user roles and what they can and cannot see. So you can click this button and view our article on user access controls, which has all of that applicable information uh, on it, as well as a handy full breakdown of the roles included here. And the last section is the in the business account is the subscriptions tab where you can manage all things related to your subscription. Now, if you've not already signed up to a paid subscription, you can do so in here. Or if you currently have a paid subscription, you can manage your uh, payments here where you can update payment details or view past invoices. And here you can change and modify your plan. So as your business grows and changes, you can make sure you have the best plan to suit your needs. Further information as to what's included in each type of plan is available again on our website, and you can also reach out to our customer support team who can answer any further questions you might have. In the business setup section here, um, these sections are really just controlling various pre-fill texts within dropdowns across BuildExact. Now, I'm not gonna go through these in much detail with you today, but the only thing I do wanna quickly note is under the supplier groups section. And we really encourage you to not change anything in here. Uh, and that is just because if you are looking to uh, eventually integrate with a accounting package, 
um, then changing this can affect how the system's ability to sync data across. Now, the last thing we're going to take you through in this video today is going to be the tax rates um, and the tax profile setup and how to adjust them as well as so you can do estimates or jobs within different tax areas or jurisdictions. Now, right away, if you're based in the United States, then you will have these set of default tax rates. First, if you're in Canada, you will have a different set of default tax rates. For this video, we're going to be going through the USA profile, but the same logic and the same principles apply regardless of which actual defaults you have applied to you. Now, effectively, what we've tried to do is make the standard rates that you start with your account with more applicable to where you're actually based. So to start, when I get in here, I'm greeted by this default set of tax rates. And right from the get-go, you can see that these first five rows here all have to do with income tax. So that is a tax applicable when I do an estimate in Build Exact or a change order or a client invoice. The last five rows are all expense tax. So that will be included and used when I do things like purchase orders or work orders within Build Exact, basically anytime I buy something. Now, using the United States as an example, you can see right at the top here, I have federal income tax set at 2%, and we have a code here that's fed inc And basically, we've told BuildExact for that this tax is applicable to material, labor, uh, MATLAB, which is essentially just supply and install. It's really just a combination of material and labor, equipment, and subcontractor. And we've told it that because each of these is ticked on for each of those types. And really what we're saying here is when we're dealing with estimates, variations, change orders, or invoices, we want to, by default, apply this 2% income tax to all of these items. And the same can be said for the state income tax as well. Here we're applying a 6.25% and by default we've applied it to all of these items. Note that this is very flexible in terms of how we've set it up. So where you're based, for example, uh, maybe labor, um, there is only uh, a federal income tax attached to it, so we can deselect it. So here again, if that item type is labor, then it's not going to have state tax, it's going to have federal tax. And on the same time, maybe material only attracts a state tax, it doesn't attack federal tax, so we can tick that off. And so again, that means material is only getting this state tax and labor here is only getting the federal income tax, whereas the other ones are getting both. Now, as you're going through this, um, you're totally free to change the names and the percents as well as what that is directly applied to. But um, there are a couple of rules that I would really stress to you. Number one, is if you're using the stock lines we've put in here, we highly recommend that you do not change the codes. And the reason for this is if you eventually look to integrate with an, a compatible accounting system, we've gone to the effort of putting in all the right codes. So when you go and connect with your accounting system, the configuration process is much smoother. So again, we highly recommend to not change those codes. The other recommendation here is for the exempt line. Now we have one for income and one for expenses. And basically all we're saying here is that as you're going through and let's say you're doing a change order for a client and there's an item that on purpose doesn't have any attacks, so it's a tax-free item, you can select this line to make sure it doesn't have a tax applied to it. So it's not default to, to any uh, type of item, but when you tell us it's tax-free, it just reverts to either of these. So absolutely need this in there. Now, again, we wouldn't go ahead and recommend to change the codes. Um, however, you're absolutely free to change the name. So, for example, here, um, you know, maybe instead of state uh, expense tax, I might put uh, uh, Texas uh, state income. Or instead of county, maybe if you're based in Travis County, uh, maybe you want to use that instead of just generic county. So, again, you're absolutely welcome to make them more specific to where you live. Um, and then again, go through and change the percentages to what's relevant to you. And then again, selecting what types that tax line is applied to. Now, of course, at any time, you're absolutely welcome to reach out to our support team who can try and provide further guidance. And you can do so by clicking the send us a message here or this little icon here. 
Now, we also do strongly encourage you to reach out to your accountant or local tax professional who will be able to provide some further advice on the tax percentages and names and what you're seeing on your tax profile and what's applicable to you. But basically, once that's set up, this is now going to be used globally across any newly created estimates and jobs. More specifically here, once I've edited this tax profile, it's important to note that this does not apply retroactively to any created uh, estimates or jobs. Next though, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if you perhaps go over state or provincial lines or counties and basically encounter a situation where the tax rates change for that specific estimate and job. So to cover this, we're going to go ahead and jump into an existing estimate. And from here, we're going to navigate to Estimate Details. Under Estimate Details, we'll click the blue Edit Pencil, and here we're going to customize this tax profile. And essentially, as you can see here, it's going to look almost exactly the same as we did a few moments ago when we were setting up your systems tax profile. And from here, I can basically go ahead and start to change the uh, percentages and what items that's applied to. So say, for example, I'm now working in a county that uh, tracks a 3% tax rate on material, MATLAB, equipment, and subcontractor. And I'm also going to do the same thing here under the expenses line as well. So now for any labor items or any MATLAB items, rather, it will have then all three of these tax items applied to it. So of course, once I've done that, I want to save it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'll click Save here. And essentially, uh, Built Exact is just going to give me a quick warning here to let me know that it's now going to adjust the calculations based off of this tax profile. And I'll go ahead and confirm those changes. And now those changes have been applied to just this specific estimate and the resulting job from it. And that concludes our account and tax profile setup. Again, if you have any questions at all, please do feel free to reach out to our support team. Or if you need any further assistance on your tax requirements, we do encourage you again to reach out to your local accountant or other tax professional.